Hi, I'm Dara. Karen. Fiona. Liam. John. And we are the Musical Beginnings team in Music Generation Waterford. This, this week's musical activity, activity is... is... Hi there, Liam here. Today, for our musical challenge, we're going to do some sound stories. I'm going to read a story and you listen very carefully and then you'll try to make the sounds that you hear mentioned in the story as I read it. Now some sounds in the story you'll be able to make using your voice or with your hands or with your feet. But for some of the other sounds you'll have to find stuff around the house that sounds like what's mentioned in the story. Like for our first story our level one story, you have to find four things. You have to find something that sounds like keys. You have to find something that sounds like a door closing. You have to find something that sounds like computer keys being pressed. And you'll have to find something that sounds like pencils dropping. Have a listen and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's called The Office Sounds. You take out your keys and open the door to the office. The door bangs behind you as you march to your desk, whistling a happy tune. You turn on the computer and your fingers go clickety-clack, clickety-clack on the keyboard. After a lot of typing, you need a cup of tea. You blow on the tea to cool it a bit and then you sip, sip, sip. Ah. Oops. You knock over a container of pencils as you sit back down. The phone is ringing. Hello? Hello? Yes, yes, yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. Okay, yep. Bye, bye-bye, bye-bye, bye, bye-bye. You need a few copies of your work. The photocopier starts up a rhythm as it posts out the pages one by one. Just about time to go. You walk out the door and pull it shut and lock it with your keys. Now, you heard I mentioned keys first of all. Now, these are my keys. If you don't have a bunch of keys, you could try rattling spoons together. The second thing I mentioned was the door banging. Now, like I said, I don't want you to go banging a real door because you might catch your fingers in the hinges. So this is what I found. I found this plastic box and if you just give it a big slap, that could be a door closing. The third thing I mentioned was the computer keys. I put some pasta in a plastic box. And if you rattle that gently, maybe it could sound like computer keys. And then the fourth thing was the pencils. Now I have pencils in a container here and you don't have to throw them on the floor because you'd only have to pick them up afterwards. But you could rattle them in the box and that might they might sound like they're falling then. A big rattle. Now, when you're thinking about the sounds, have a think, is it a loud sound or is it a quiet sound? Now, when we think about that, either loud or quiet, we're talking about dynamics. The dynamics mean we're either making a loud sound or a, a quiet sound, or a very loud sound or a very quiet sound, or middling loud or middling quiet. So that's called dynamics. So when you're making your sounds, have a think to yourself, is this going to be a loud sound or is it a quiet sound? Always think of your dynamics. When you're making your phone call, when you're saying hello, mm-hmm, okay, yes, yes, think about the way your voice is speaking. I'd like you to have some where your voice is high, high pitched and some where your voice is low. And we're, we talk about pitch there whether it's high notes or low notes. So in your phone call, 
you can change the pitch of your voice, sometimes to have it high, sometimes to have it low. High like that, low like that. Um, and then, of course, there are other sounds that you don't need anything for. Blowing on the tea, the phone call. When you come to the photocopier rhythm, now, what I'd like you to do is to think about Dara's body percussion pattern. If you could go back to Dara's video, the body percussion pattern is what I'd like the sound of the photocopier to be. A photocopier makes a sort of a, a rhythm when it's churning out pages. And you can use Dara's pattern to do your photocopy rhythm. The level one for story level one. So I'm going to read the story again. And this time uh, you can use your things that you've found around the house to make the sounds. I'll give you a few minutes to go off, do a bit of a treasure hunt and come back when you're ready and we'll read the story then. So you can pause now, find your stuff and then come back. Here we go. The office sounds. You take out your keys and open the door to the office. The door bangs behind you. As you march to your desk, whistling a happy tune. You turn on the computer and your fingers go clickety-clack, clickety-clack on the keyboard. After a lot of typing, you need a cup of tea. You blow on the tea to cool it a bit and then sip, sip. <sighs> Oops, you knock over a container of pencils as you sit back down. The phone is ringing. You must answer it. Hello? Hello? Mm hmm. Yeah. You need a few copies of your work. The photocopier starts up a rhythm as it posts out the pages one by one. And it's just about time to go now. You walk out the door, pull it shut behind you and lock it. Now we're going to move on to level two. In level two, you have to find some more things because it's going to be the same basic story but with extra bits added. This time, we're going to look for the sound of a shoe on different surfaces. We're going to think about the sounds of a box of paper clips. We'll think about the sound of a spoon on a mug, and we'll think about the sound of the clicking of a light. Now, again, I'll read the story, and then you can have a think about the sounds that you hear. Listen out for the ones that we've done already and listen out for the new ones as well. So here is The Office Songs, Level 2. You walk to the office building, your good shoes noisy on the hard surface of the path. Your bunch of keys rattles as you unlock the door. The door bangs behind you when you walk in. Your footsteps are much quieter now, muffled by the carpet. Into the office and the work starts straight away. Your fingers clickety-clacking on the computer keyboard. You rummage in a box of paper clips. Time for a cup of tea. The kettle heats up and gives a click and you pour the water into your mug a splash of milk, clink clink of the spoon on the mug as you swirl the tea bag and then take it out. You blow on the hot tea to cool it before you sip. Oops, you knock over a container of pens and pencils as you sit back down. A rattle and a bang as you pick them up crossly, tossing them back into the container. The phone is ringing. Hello? Yes? Mm hmm. Uh huh. Okay. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. The day goes by. Lunchtime. 
gobble down that food. Sip from your water bottle. More things to type. More pages to sort. Time to photocopy a few pages. Time to do the photocopier rhythm. Oh, this is tiring. You lean back in your chair, a big stretch and a yawn. At last, it's time to go. Click off the lights, close the door behind you, and lock it. Walk out into the street, free at last. So now here we are at level three. Uh, in the level three story, I'm going to ask you to find some more things. You'll have to keep the things that you used for the other levels, but the things that I'm going to ask you to try and find sounds for are more difficult now. So uh, that, how would you find something that might sound like car tires switching on the road? Well, you'll just have to go around and see what you can find. Um, I found a tray and if I rub my hand on it, that could be a car or a box that could be car tires on the road as well you'll have to decide yourself you go around try out different things and see what see what you think um something that might sound like the coffee machine hissing i suppose you could use the same things there um coats and bags and belongings rustling I don't you could do that sort of thing. You could get clothes and rattle them together, but they mightn't make so much of a sound. But experiment yourself. Now, um, we spoke about dynamics in level one and level two stories. And we'll still remember it in level three. We'll always have to remember, are we making a loud sound, forte sound, or are we making a quiet sound, a piano sound? But in this story, we have the kettle. It starts off quiet and gets louder. And we call that crescendo, where it starts quiet and gets louder. Uh, we, crescendo, it's another Italian word, meaning getting louder, getting louder. And um, so when you come to that part, you can think of your crescendo, starting quietly, and the kettle, as it's making noise, as it's boiling, it gets louder and louder and louder until it clicks and, um, it's at its boiling point then. Don't forget for your phone call, you're thinking about your pitch. Some of the words are high voice, some of the words are in your low voice. So that will be a changing pitch as we talk. When we come to the photocopier part, you can go to that really um, challenging uh, rhythm that Dara did for the level three body percussion. There's one other thing that's different about this story as well. And it's sometimes there are more than one sound together. When you're walking along the street, your friend comes along and there's two sets of footsteps. When you're inside in the office, there are lots of people working together. So sometimes the, there might be a clinking of a cup at the same time as there might be um, people clicking on the keyboard. So in music terms, we call that texture. Sometimes when you're listening to a piece of music, you notice the texture, but sometimes it's just one sound on its own. Sometimes it's a number of different sounds that are working together, playing together, weaving in and out among each other. And that's called texture. The office sounds level three. You walk along the street to your office building, your good shoes noisy on the hard surface of the path. Car tires make a swish, swish sound as they pass you. You hear someone coming up behind you. It's your friend from the office. So you walk along together, chatting. You open the door, keys jingling as you turn the key in the lock. The door bangs behind you when you walk in. The two of you walk along the corridor your footsteps much quieter now, muffled by the carpet. Click, click of light switches as you walk. 
other people start to arrive. High heels and flat shoes, runners and walking boots, all making their own rhythmic sounds on the office floor. And the work starts. Computer keyboards clickety clack. Someone switches on the coffee machine and it starts to hiss and burble as it heats up. From time to time throughout the day, cups clink as people help themselves to coffee. There's tea as well though. The noise of the kettle gets louder and louder as it comes to the boil. It's a busy, noisy place here and someone knocks over a container of pencils. The photocopier starts a rhythm as it churns out a load of pages. You look in your drawer for a box of paper clips. Oh yes, here they are. Lunchtime comes. Some people gobble. Others nibble. Some people slurp coffee. Others sip. The phone rings. Hello? Hello? Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye, 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 bye-bye. Eventually, it's time to go. People gather their things. A rustling of coats and bags and belongings. A, a, a chorus of goodbyes. Bye-bye, bye-bye, bye-bye. Click off the lights. Out the front door. Bang it shut. And lock up for the night. Well done. If you've got this far and you've joined in with making sounds for the story, you've been doing the same job as a Foley artist. If you ever watch the credits of a film, you'll see one of the jobs there in the list is a Foley artist. And the job of the Foley artist is to make sounds, to go with the action on the screen. Sometimes when things are being filmed, they don't actually make enough noise to hear. So somebody called the Foley artist has to make the noise in a studio that will go along with the sound of uh, the, the action on the screen. Um, it was actually named after a man called Jack Foley, who was the person who thought of the idea of putting extra sounds so that the audience could enjoy the film. So what you've been doing is like, just like what Jack Foley did years and years and years ago. So next time you're watching a film, have a look around, have a look out in the credits for the Foley artist. We'll talk to you again. See ya. Bye.